lactam. So let's have the beta lactams or the beta lactam antibiotics or antibacterials. Now let us emphasize first the difference between antibiotics and antibacterial. So when we say antibacterial, they it these drugs has action against bacteria, of course. But when we say antibiotics, this can be antibacterial, antifungal that came from or that has originated from natural sources. Okay, so antibiotics. So we have today antibiotics, antibacterials. Now, this is the beta-lactam ring. So that is how a beta-lactam ring looks like. Okay, so it looks like a kite flying or as I, I don't know um, what does it resembles on on each one of us, but um, ganyan yung itsura ng ating beta lactam ring. So uh, our beta lactams, mag, the major classification is the penicillin and the cephalosporin. But there we have another types of also like the monobactam later on. So the first group is called penicillin. So famous example of penicillin, we have PENG or the benzyl penicillin. This is the IV. And the phenoxymethyl penicillin or the PENV. And then the second major group, we have cephalosporin. So cephalosporin, if you can recall in your organic medicinal chemistry, we have studied a very big table on this that cephalosporin is categorized according to its spectrum of activity. So the higher the generation, the broader the spectrum of activity. Please. This is how our different beta-lactam antibiotics looks like. We have four types, the penicillin, the cephalosporin, the carbapenems, and the monobactam. So the one in circle are the things that make them unique with each other. So if you can recall, this part here is the beta-lactam part. That is the beta-lactam part, the square with the double bond O. So that is with, uh, with the N also. So that is how the beta-lactam ring looks like. What makes penicillin unique is penicillin has a house, while cephalosporin has a piatos, and our carbapenems has a pentagon, and monobactam is alone. That's why it's mono. So we, looking at it, even though we don't know, uh, we don't memorize each of our drug because under penicillin, we have a lot of brand names. Uh, we have a lot of um, generic names under it. Under cephalosporin, we have numerous numbers of example. So just by looking at it, you can differentiate which is penicillin because penicillin, again, has, an, has a house. Cephalosporin has a piatos, carbapenem has a pentagon, and monobactam is alone. Okay, remember that ano, that trivia. I hope if I will give you a hundred structures, you can identify or match which is penicillin, which is ceph, which is carbapenem, and which is monobactam. So penicillin contains a beta lactam with a five-membered thiazolidine ring. So, thiazolidine ring, ito siya. And then for cephalosporin, the piatos is called six-membered dihydrothiazine ring. And in our carbapenem, we have here the carboxylic acid in the car. And then for the monobactam, it's monocyclic. Now, let's move forward to the specific mechanism of action of our beta lactams. So there are two properties that contribute to the unequal importance of beta-lactam antibiotics in chemotherapy. So our beta-lactam has a potent and rapid, and, and rapid bactericidal action against bacteria in the growth phase. So meron siyang rapid bactericidal action. We will understand that because our beta-lactams has an has a direct effect on the cell wall of the bacteria. And then it has a very low frequency of toxic and adverse reactions in the host. That is why it is very common to give beta lactams because they are not we they are um, not toxic to our body. And then the unique lethal antibacterial action of this agent, as I have mentioned, 
is attributed to selective inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis. So selective inhibition of this cell wall synthesis will be presented later on. But this action, generally, it inhibits the biosynthesis of the dipeptidoglycan. So dipeptidoglycan or the peptidoglycan is very unique to gram positive. Okay? It provides strength and rigidity to the cell wall. That is why our beta-lactams, they are commonly employed to combat or to kill gram-positive bacteria generally. Okay? Yun siya kanyang main action. Penicillins and cephalosporins acylate a specific bacterial detranspeptidase enzyme. So if you can recall in our organic chemistry, the process of acylation is the process of adding an acyl group to the compound. So the compound providing the acyl group is called the acylating agent. Okay, if you can recall that, it's the acylating agent. And the one being acylated or acylated is a bacteria. So penicillins and cephalosporins are acylating agent, categorized as um, acylating agent because they acylate or they, they do their action by adding um, acyl compounds to our detranspeptidase to inactivate it. And when this peptidase is inactivated, it will lose its role or its action in the forming of cross-linkings of these peptidoglycans. So when these peptidoglycans will not cross-link together, that will, um, that will weaken the, the integrity of our cell wall, later on causing cell lysis. So this is how our gram-positive and gram-negative um, bacterial cell wall looks like. So both of them, of course, they have peptidoglycan. But what's unique for gram-positive is the layers of peptidoglycan that makes it very, very thick. So dito mismo sa, sa naka-bracket na to ang action ng ating um, beta-lactam antibacterials. Okay, so dyan din natin na-expect na cross-link yung ating D-transpeptidase. Moving forward, we have this penicillin binding protein properties. So we have specific actions or the, not we, the penicillins has specific binding properties or binding proteins or actions. We have, we have here... PBP is 1A and 1B, 2, 3, and 4. So we have 1A. This one is type of transpeptidase that is associated with cell wall elongation. So inhibition of this, okay, inhibition of this penicillin binding protein property will result into Spleroplast formation and rapid cell lysis caused by autolysine. So it is a specific mechanism of action. So if you will be asked um, what produces um, cell lysis, it will be specifically on our PBP1A or the PBP1A, 1B, and PBP2 inhibition of the gram-positive bacteria. So CPBP2, this is for the men, this is for rod-shaped bacteria. This is for maintaining their their shape, of course. So when you inhibit it, it will result in ovoid or round form and undergo lysis. But compared to action in the PBP1A and 1B, it is less, uh, it is slow compared to the, the first one. And then the third type is the PBP3. It's a transpeptidase required for septum formation during cell division. So the inhibition results in the formation of filamentous forms containing rod-shaped units that cannot separate. So this is not yet clear whether it inhibits PBP3 
and it is let lethal to the bacterium. But there are uh, there are some drugs that has action on PBP3 or binds to PBP3. Another is our PBP4. Okay, so it has it is responsible for the lysis of our D-alanine and D-alanine terminal um, peptide bonds. So this one, so though they have an action on PBP4, they really does not um, uh, produce cell lysis or they are not actually lethal to the bacteria. Okay, so I hope you have you have taken down notes on the type of PBP properties of the bacteria and the possible specific action of your beta lactams. Now let's move forward to the bacterial resistance. Okay, so most gram, uh, most gram positive or uh, gram negative bacilli, gram negative bacilli are naturally resistant to the actions of penicillin. Okay, because as I have mentioned a while ago, um, at the start, generally the penicillins or beta lactams, they are designed for gram positive. So bacteria, of course, it, it is a fact that it can develop penicillin resistance and, um, and drug resistance. So the mechanism of penicillin resistance is through enzyme inactivation, okay, production of enzyme that can inactivate our drug. And it is the famous enzyme penicillinase. So our penicillinase can be your beta lactamases and your acylases. Okay, so if you can remember a while ago, our beta lactams are acylating agents. So our acylating agents will be um, will be countered up by acylases, an enzyme produced by the bacteria to, to degrade our acylating agents such as the beta lactam antibacterials. Another very famous enzyme is the beta lactamases. So this enzyme catalyzes the hydrolytic opening of the beta lactam ring. So it directly inactivates the beta lactam ring and the inactivated beta lactam ring is now called as penicilloic acid. Okay, so when the beta lactams are inactivated by our beta and beta lactamases, it will become or it will produce the byproduct or the structure penicilloic acid. The other one here, as I have mentioned, the specific acylases. So this can be obtained from several species of gram negative bacteria. And then gram negative bacteria has decreased perme permeability also to penicillins. Okay. So we can improve our beta lactams such as cephalosporins by adding structures or if we can if you use the language of game we can add on like you upgrade your 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 what you call that your mga armor you can upgrade the armor of our cephalosporins allowing it to allowing it to withstand the acyl the acylases of our gram negative. By that, they will have an action against gram bacteria, gram negative bacteria. That is why, as we move forward from the first generation, commonly it acts on gram positive. And then, as we go forward to third gen, fourth gen of our cephalosporins, because they have gained um, um, thicker armor through the addition of a lot of structures or alkyl groups that leads them to. Um, decrease um, resistance or they, the gram-negative bacteria has decreased resistance against penicillin or cephalosporin and it will be overcome by the drug. 